ready to activate coins. So I'm choosing, I chose Bitcoin here. So you check the box for it. It's crazy. You're, I'm about to transfer quite a lot of money on this piece of plastic that has a touch screen. I'm like, Ooh. hi everybody, Emily Bender here. Let's talk about cold storage and Bitcoin and getting off of exchanges. I'm going to do a little cold storage transfer party and you can join me for it. The most important concept in Bitcoin is ownership. And with a cold storage wallet, only you have access to the keys that prove that you own your own money. I've used a few different exchanges over time. Those were fine for a while, but I had always planned to move everything into a wallet. And this is a wallet that my friend Davis Bitsky recommended, the Trezor Model T. I'll put a link in the description below. You only wanna buy these wallets on a legitimate retailer or direct from the company that's selling it, like Ledger, Trezor, other ones too. As you've probably heard in the last couple of months, a lot of things have been going on in the crypto market. They don't have the assets to back up the interest rates when there's a run on the bank, essentially. So let's go through this. I'm pretty happy with so far the experience here. Now I haven't actually plugged this in. I wanted to do this with you in real time. I'm obviously not gonna like share my screen when I go to truly transfer everything. I'm in BlockFi at the moment. BlockFi has been great. I've been earning interest on the BlockFi credit card. I've earned interest on my Bitcoin and my ETH balances. However, I want to go to cold storage because I'm seeing the headlines every day of these exchanges are, you know, not liquid and they can't let you take your money out. So I'm not, um, I'm not a fan of that. This is the Trezor wallet and it comes with this little magnetic kind of uh, sticker that you could put it onto your desktop if you wanted to. I don't need to do that. What else is in the box? Uh, okay. So there's a cord, right? You have to plug this in. Everything is happening offline. This is not on an app and it's not stored anywhere in the cloud, which is the beauty of it. So it's, it's so offline. They're like, don't take a picture. Don't store it in Evernote or Google Drive. You're going to have a 12 word phrase. That's your secret key. And that needs to be in your brain. So I hope you don't ever get amnesia and forget it. But you download the Trezor desktop software, and I'm on a Mac, so you'll see kind of how this looks. But what is so important is when you open this, there is a hologram sticker. If that is compromised in any way, do not proceed. And it will be the official Trezor hologram. I'm not sure if you can kind of see how that looks, but, but what else is cool about this wallet is that it has a touch screen, so you can really see what's going on there. Some of the less expensive models, you're a little blind, but this one, it's, it's G to G got the box open it's three steps get started one connect trezor to your computer or smartphone with the usb cord inside Two, open trezor.io slash start in your web browser and then three follow instructions and sleep tight so i have plugged it in i am using the macbook so i plugged it in with my dongle the USB C, and it says welcome then you can see here this is the trezor suite mac desktop software that you download from their website which you do need so my hologram was intact. Great. I bought it from the official shop. Yep. Package was not tampered with. Cool. Set up. Okay. Let's install the firmware. Although set aside a few hours because something could go wrong and have a friend that you can call. I mentioned Dave, my buddy. He's like my crypto Sherpa and he's like, you got to get off the exchange, Emily. Cool. Install. Continue. Create a new wallet. That's what we're doing. Standard seed backup. Shamir share backup. So do standard seed backup. Choose how to back up your Trezor. This process will also create a standard wallet for you. Do you want to create a new wallet? By continuing, you agree to their terms of service. So I'm going to tap the green check mark on the screen. Okay, that worked. Needs backup. Your wallet is almost ready. You've successfully set up the wallet. Should never use it without backing it up. It's the only way to recover a lost wallet. Create backup. Check your backup in device settings before sending money to the wallet. Never take a photo or make a digital copy of the backup. I know that's going to be what you think you're supposed to do, but don't. Keep your backup secured and never share it with anyone. No matter who it is, don't share it. Let's begin the backup. Click to confirm. Check your backup in the device settings before sending money. All right, let's begin. It says confirm on the Trezor. It'll generate a list of words you need to write down. The information is the most important part of securing the Trezor. It is the only offline backup at all while it's associated. Then you, you click, I understand here. I'm gonna write these down on a piece of paper. By the way, if you guys like my Bitcoin bling necklace, I'll put a link in the description. I bought this for my Bitcoin queen Halloween costume. Obviously it's all making fun of myself. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not serious with it, but it's fun. It's crazy. You're, I'm about to transfer 
quite a lot of money on this piece of plastic that has a touch screen. I'm like, hmm, fingers crossed. I'm sure it's going to be fine. Okay, writing down the words in order. It's kind of dangerous doing this while I'm filming a YouTube video because my brain is a little distracted. Like, maybe this is a bad idea, but I don't know. I feel like you guys are going to want me to do this with you because... I make the videos that I wish existed when I do things, whether it's setting up an LLC, picking a business bank account, um, moving crypto to cold storage. You just want somebody to really do it with you who is in the same boat. Right? I've written down all 12 of the words in my recovery seed. I checked them seven times. I paused the video and said them out loud to myself. I didn't want to have a dyslexia moment. I, it's, it's stressful. Like You really need to focus and it, don't be drinking when you're doing this serious then there's a green button on the screen hold to confirm i wrote down all 12 words in order yep holding the green button to confirm now it gives me the list of word one of 12 and i have to okay this is great it's giving me a quiz to make sure i got it right okay i'm going to choose the first word click it the sixth word i will choose it it's a little screen you got to have some baby corns here to hit these good thing i have small hands i have finished verifying my recovery seat i got three of them right your backup is done. Use your backup when you need to recover your wallet. Now it says pin not set. The backup is complete. Let's continue to the pin. And by the way, guys, a pin is a pin. A pin is not a personal identification number number. It's not a pin number. It's a pin. P-I-N. N is for number. You don't have to say number at the end of pin. Okay. Use a strong pin to protect it from unauthorized physical access. All right, I'm going to set the pin. Now on the, on the wallet, when it says confirm here, so it says, do you really want to enable pin protection? Of course I do. Oh, the numbers are kind of out of order. That's cool. This is like that episode of Billions where Axe Ax has all the crypto, right? And they have a standoff and it's like, you have four guesses to get the wallet open and then it's locked forever. Re-enter it, processing, two seconds left. You have successfully enabled pin protection down my pin here why am i whispering it's like i'm always worried that when i do any like credit card review videos or these kind of things that you can somehow like see my secret notes down below outside the frame of the camera um okay pin has changed so we've got a pin and we have our 12 secret phrase key which was the words that this thing generated okay pin set continue cool so now we're going to choose our coins i have bitcoin and eth that's it and i have some Gemini US dollar that I'm going to keep in BlockFi actually because it is earning interest. It's earning like 7.5%, but they capped that back in February, but that's okay. At least I have a simpler situation than some people who's like, I got some in Coinbase. I'm in Gemini. I'm in BlockFi. Bitcoin. Okay. Make sure that you subscribe and thumb this video up if you want more personal finance and anything crypto related. I'm not a crypto expert. This is just, I'm a retail investor and I'm getting into cold storage because I can see the writing on the wall. And you know, the ethos of crypto is really decentralized at its core. Maybe I'll come back and do like a tighter video where this is not such a, like you're discovering it with me process, but comment below if you want something like tighter or um, anything at all. Ready to activate coins. So I'm choosing, I chose Bitcoin here. So you check the box for it. You see that little green check that means it's chosen. Ethereum, those are the two that I'm in. You might have Dogecoin, you might have Vertcoin, Cardano, et cetera. Anything here you can activate. So I'm gonna hit complete setup. And by the way, my device is unlocked. While I was on pause, triple checking everything, I re-entered my pin into the Trezor to kind of wake it back up. Okay, complete setup. Great, I'm gonna edit the name. I like to call things EB Phone Home. Cool, I'm gonna hit enter. Access suite. All right, so just figured something out here. The standard wallet with no passphrase is where I actually want to put this test amount of Bitcoin in. I went through the hidden wallet kind of by accident here. And then word to the wise, there will be an option in this desktop software where they say, oh, would you like to enter the passcode here? If you click no, enter it on my device, then you have to type it onto the device. But if you haven't already set up the hidden wallet, it's a little confusing as to, are you now setting up the passphrase for that? Or do they mean the passphrase from the first 12 words? So I'm not gonna do the hidden wallet at this point. Try this one more time here. Okay, so 
the assets that I chose, which are Bitcoin and Ethereum, are ready. They're going to receive the crypto that I'm going to transfer in from BlockFi. We're going to do a little test at first. When I first moved my crypto out of Coinbase, basic bitch, into BlockFi, I did it in so many different transactions because I kept thinking like, is this going to fail? It was stressful. Basically, I'm going to do a couple of tests here. And if it's working and good, I'm just going to dump it in. Because when I did so many little tests and amounts like $100, $1,000, however many Bitcoins, uh, it got a little harder to track. And I was like, did I leave any behind? It, it's going to be cleaner to just do a couple tests and then the big dump. So I have the pin. I have the backup created, the passphrase enabled. I've updated the firmware. Make sure that when you're doing all this, you're updating your firmware in the Trezor desktop software. There will be an area where it shows you that you can do that. Like if you click on the gear icon here, device, make sure that when you're in, um, you go to the gear icon and then hit firmware version and hit up to date. So we are up to date. I just installed this today. My friend Dave said that he's still earning interest on the BlockFi credit card, the Bitcoin rewards card, which is cool. Like so do I. And he just once a month moves it over to the Trezor wallet. So then he's still getting the interest, but he's not exposed. So sure, you're not going to be getting, whether it's 3.5 or 4% in ETH or Bitcoin interest in the interest bearing account, you could still be earning interest on the Bitcoin credit card rewards. Even if it's just a little here and there, a few hundred bucks a month that you're spending, it's still worth it because it's Bitcoin, you're getting rewards in Bitcoin. Okay, I popped over to BlockFi and I just did a quick little transfer of 0 0.0005 Bitcoin, which is right now about $10 worth of Bitcoin. I moved it out of my BlockFi interest account into my BlockFi wallet. This is not reversible. This is why, you know, you have the benefits of in the interest account, you can earn interest. But for me, of course, having it in cold storage outweighs those benefits at this point. So you can see here this July 26th right now today complete. So now that amount is in my BlockFi wallet. I can transfer it into my Trezor wallet. I'm going to use my Trezor address, pop that into BlockFi, transfer it over and it could take 30 minutes. It could take four hours. The transfer speeds depend. And if you're willing to pay a little more in fees, they'll go faster. I'm not in any hurry. So once that's done, I'm going to show you the Trezor wallet and let's make sure that we got our $10 worth of Bitcoin. Okay, so I have successfully transferred 0 0.0005 Bitcoin from BlockFi into my Trezor wallet. And it's going to take longer than I thought. It said it won't be here until tomorrow at 8 PM. So that's over 24 hours away. Maybe it'll come sooner, but we'll see. Anyway, this video was really supposed to be about setting up the Trezor wallet, but I figured I might as well show you also like the first transaction. I'm going to make a separate video when I go deeper into the transactions. If you want, comment, like this video, thumb it up. Let me know if that would be useful to you. Move your crypto into cold storage, guys. Take control. I'm Emily Bender. I'll be back next time. Thanks for watching.